G'day everyone. I started playing Guild Wars 2 six months ago, and naturally, as a game that's been around for over 10 years, there was lots to digest. So I've put together 10 things I wish I'd known earlier in my journey that are bound to help at least a few new players out there. This isn't intended to just be a collection of random tips and tricks, but rather 10 broader themes, mindsets, or gameplay approaches that I wish I had embraced earlier. So let's get started. My first point is simple, but I think it's appropriate that any new player starts with this, a settings overhaul. Because frankly, some of the default game settings are pretty rubbish. Every gamer has different settings preferences, but here are some I'd definitely recommend for everyone. Enable the show all usable object names setting. This will display a name in game for gathering nodes and interactable objects, which are very easy to miss without this setting. I didn't have this setting on until I couldn't figure out where the airship cargo was in Verdant Brink. And so when I Google it, I found this setting and realized they were everywhere. I just couldn't see them. I wonder how much else I missed before this. Disable double tap to dodge and bind dodge to something comfortable along with your F1 to F6 profession skills because you'll be using these a lot. Disable melee attack assist. This setting prevents you from entering or moving through enemy hitboxes, which is really annoying and actually prevents you from positioning correctly on boss encounters or being able to use certain abilities inside an enemy hitbox for best effect. Enable allow skill retargeting, and importantly, AOE loot, because this will save you heaps of time. You'll find other settings to suit your preference, but these are a good start. Shortly after I started playing this game, I found myself Googling meta builds and trying to figure out the best weapons and best skills. This was a waste of time and effort, and only confused me more. I'd really encourage you to try all the different combinations yourself as you level. The flow, style, and feel of combat varies a lot in this game, and can change vastly with a simple weapon swap. You might find you love the gameplay of something that isn't considered meta. The core game leveling experience is not very punishing, so try all the weapons, skills, and traits as you go. Also, don't stress over which skills and traits to unlock first. You'll get it all eventually. Just play what looks fun as you level, experiment with your profession, and in doing so, you'll actually develop a better holistic understanding of your class. The home instance is something that I was completely ignorant to until literally a week ago. If you don't even know what they are yet, I recommend looking up a dedicated video. But simply put, it's an instanced area in your race's home city that will develop as you progress through the story and unlock features within the home instance. They aren't just cosmetic or for role playing. You can actually upgrade your home instance with a range of gathering nodes, special vendors and merchants that bring a variety of very tangible rewards. I definitely recommend you engage with this system much earlier than I have. Guild Wars 2 is one of the most alt friendly games I've ever played. Your entire wallet, meaning all your gold and currencies, your material storage, your masteries, and most achievements are all account bound. I only properly realized this recently, and so now whenever I'm grinding for certain map currencies, maybe gold farming or completing a legendary collection achievement, I've started doing this across multiple characters, and it's been a really great way to switch things up while still working towards the same goals. So don't be afraid to play some alts. The Guild Wars 2 community is easily the most helpful, welcoming, and friendly community I've ever experienced in any MMO. So far, I've not had a single negative interaction with any other player. This might just be lucky, but I've also asked a lot of dumb questions, so I highly doubt it's just luck. Some useful ways to engage the community is firstly to ask for help or questions in map chat by typing slash map. If you've come across a hard event, mini boss, or can't figure out how to get to a hero point, just ask for help. I nearly always get a response and people flooding in to help kill stuff when I do this. Even if you're a proud solo player, this is definitely something you can do. The second main thing to do is to follow commanders. If you're not familiar with this icon, this is a commander, a player who has some experience and has activated their commander tag, which is basically them saying, hello everyone, I'm here to help and guide you. Click their tag to join their squad, follow them through whatever you're doing, and feel free to ask them questions. They have chosen to turn on the commander status, so they're nearly guaranteed to help you. And finally, I highly recommend joining a guild and engaging in Discord communities. This is where you'll get the best help and build a group of friends and like-minded players to enjoy the game with, be it raiding, world vs world, PvP, or open world content. There are guilds for all types of gameplay. This won't be for everyone, but if you've never tried it, I really suggest you at least try. The Guild Wars 2 wiki is one of the best game wikis I've ever seen. After I discovered it, I nearly always play with it open on my other screen for one reason or another. To get the best use out of the wiki, remember that you can link straight to it from the game by typing slash wiki in the game chat. Even more useful is to look up random items in your inventory to see what they do. Type slash wiki, then shift click the item in your bag, and it will link straight to that item so you can see everything about it really easily. The events timer page is probably the next most useful thing in the wiki. It shows the timers for most world bosses and meta events in the entire game. You can get there quickly by typing slash wiki space ET in the game chat. A fun way that a lot of people play open world content is just a map hop to whatever meta event or world boss is about to start. 
and you can use this page as a guide. The other most useful pages I've found are the interactable tables for runes, sigils, relics, food, and utility buffs. These are really useful as you can filter by stats or type, and they'll be really helpful to explore the many build crafting opportunities. As you progress in this game, you will undoubtedly have full bags constantly, and it's something you'll need to embrace and get good at cleaning up, or you'll be constantly battling a full bag. Some tips to help with this. For the newest players, use this button here often. It is the best button in the whole game. It'll automatically send all materials to your account material storage. Remember to sell all junk and trophies at vendors regularly, and salvage all gear to accumulate even more materials. If you're happy to support the game through some gem store purchases, the Copper Fed Salvage Kit is probably the most quality of life you'll get from a single item in the whole game, but you certainly don't need it. You can also buy some more bag space too, which really helps. Some less obvious tips are to use equipment templates, which don't use bag space for gear. So if you have spare equipment you don't want to salvage, set up those equipment templates and you can save huge amounts of room in your bags. Look into getting some converters. These are items that will consume extra ascended materials in exchange for materials and trophies daily. After a while, I promise you'll have way more bloodstone dust than you can handle, clogging up your bags. So this is a great way to reduce it without wasting it. And finally, you can sell to the trading post from anywhere. You don't have to be at a vendor. I won't tell you how long it took me to realize this. So I recommend selling stuff or at least checking its value as you go from anywhere. One thing I didn't fully understand for a little while was the different types of damage in Guild Wars and how that affects your builds and stats. There is strike damage, which is the initial damage from most abilities. And then there's condition damage, which comes from bleeding, burning, poison, torment, fear, and confusion. Whilst there's a variety of stats in the game, the two that impact the potency of your damage are power, which increases strike damage, and condition damage, which increases the damage of all conditions. As a result, most builds focus on either power or condition damage, and will normally be referred to as either a power build or a condi build. All abilities and skills in the game scale with either power or condition damage. For example, the Ranger's Greatsword ability Enduring Swing has a power coefficient of 1.4, and with my current gear, which is mostly Berserkers, you can see the tooltip shows about 1700 damage, whereas the short bow ability Crossfire has a power coefficient of 0.5, and its tooltip is much weaker at 535 damage. But you would have noticed, Crossfire also applies bleeding, which will scale with condition damage and expertise. So if I swap to a Viper set, which is the most common condition equipment, and change my Soul Beast pet, I'll have a bit less power, but much more condition damage and duration. Now Crossfire shows a slightly small initial hit, but the bleed damage is much, much higher. This is a good example of two weapons that scale with different stats. The Ranger's Greatsword is stronger in a power build, while the Short Bow is far better for a condition build. It's important to understand as you experiment with your class, as I mentioned before, what your abilities are scaling with and whether you're focusing on condi damage or power. So not a tip exactly, but definitely something fundamental for new players to be aware of and understand. Engage instanced endgame content earlier. Now I know this can be hard. For new players, it can be really scary and confronting to join instanced groups for the first time. I'm a relatively experienced MMO player, and even I get a little funny when I'm joining new encounters for the first time and I know how easy it is to put it off and just keep enjoying the open world content that Guild Wars 2 does so well. But that's exactly why I really urge you to break the ice early and start engaging with Fractals, Strikes, PvP, or World vs. World, and do it earlier than later. Now I know that's easier said than done, so if you're a really new player and not sure how to do that, here's what I recommend to get started. Get yourself a cheap exotic gear set from the trading post. You can do any content in only exotic gear, don't worry about ascended gear yet. If you're really new, Look up the named armor sets for a cheap Berserker set if you're using a power build, or the Carrion or Dire sets for a decent beginner condition build. Use weapons and skills that you're comfortable with from leveling. Don't just try to copy a meta build from online that you have no idea how to play. You're better off doing what you know. And then in terms of what to join, for strikes, keep an eye out for groups called IBS Easy 3. These are perfect to start with for boss style encounters, or for fractals, join any tier 1 groups under level 20. These are definitely the most beginner friendly content and are a great place to get your feet wet and build some confidence. If you want more info on instanced PvE, check out this video of mine that talks about these in more depth from a new player's perspective. I'd really encourage you to give this a crack as early as you can, so that you can enjoy different content types and start earning daily rewards from strikes, fractals, world vs world, or even weekly raids earlier. And finally, most importantly, do not rush to the end game in Guild Wars 2. Enjoy the leveling, enjoy the story content, and enjoy the open world. One of the biggest mistakes I made 
admittedly influenced by my World of Warcraft experience, was that I completely rushed the leveling experience and raced to max level. I know this is a common mentality for MMOs, but please don't do this in Guild Wars 2. The open world content in Guild Wars 2 is arguably its biggest and most unique strength among other MMO competitors, and it's a significant part of the core experience, so don't rush it. Enjoy it. Explore that random thing in the distance. Gather resources as you go. Follow chains of dynamic events and get distracted by random NPC dialogue. Take a moment to watch the vistas and enjoy the story, especially in the expansions and living world. There is no map order, so go wherever you like within the recommended level brackets, engage in map meta events, and equally don't be afraid to skip over something if you don't like it. And the beauty is that when you come back around for achievements, map completion, collections and legendaries, you'll have done the bulk of the work already just naturally by enjoying the game which is exactly how it should work. So that's my top 10 points for new players. Hopefully I help at least a few new players out there. And if you like the video, as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for listening, everyone. Cheers.